and welcome to another episode of BPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. So, Chris, what do you want to cover today? Well, I thought we could cover, if I get a custom store procedure, a custom report, how to apply those to the database. Okay. To that, my enterprise database. Sure, yeah. sure. I'll let you know if you request a custom report, you will typically get in a zipped folder, um, either a from our um, FTP site or maybe attached to an incident, you'll get mm -hmm. a zip folder typically with the report and also with a stored procedure um, mm -hmm. file in it. Right. So let's take a look at how to apply that. Sure. Okay. So I have a custom report here and stored procedure in a zipped folder here. So the first thing you'll want to do is right click on it and unzip it. I would recommend going to properties and if there's an unblock button in the lower right hand corner, corner here, you can click on it to unblock it, and then you can unzip it. So I have um, the file unzipped here, and so this is typically what you might see. In this case, I have a custom acknowledgement report. So I have a file called um, acknowledgement.rpt, that's the actual crystal report, and I have a file um, that begins with SP, and that's the stored procedure. Now a stored procedure is just a SQL query that pulls the data out of the database. So that has to run in SQL. Right. The RPT file is a crystal report that um, you have to in install wherever your reports are run in enterprise. Right, sure. Okay. We'll take a look at, at uh, where to put those. Okay. All right. So first let's go into enterprise. And I'm going to run the, the order acknowledgement report that um, it's our standard report that we have in the database right now first. So I'm going to open up estimating order entry and I'm going to go into the job ticket and I'm going to print the acknowledgement report. And you can see here it's our standard acknowledgement report. Mm -hmm. Well, now I want to install our custom. So I'm going to exit out of here. And the first thing you want to do is install the report. And you have to install that report where you are running your reports from. To see that, you would go into File Maintenance. You would go to the File menu. You would go to System Settings. And then in here, you would click on the System Options tab. And in this lower right corner, you'll see here what folder it is that you're running your crystal reports from. Now, if the, in, in my example, it's the C colon Enterprise 32 folder, which mm -hmm. tells me it's running locally on my machine. Sure. So in my case, um, I might have Enterprise installed on 10 machines in my shop, mm -hmm. and if everybody's um, running the reports from the C colon Enterprise 32 folder on their machine, then you've got to right. install that report on every machine. Every machine, yep. Okay? Makes, Makes sense? sense? Sure. Okay. So that's where I'm going to put the report. So I'm going to exit out of here, and I'm going to minimize Enterprise for a minute. And I'm going to open up another Windows Explorer window, so I have two of them open here. And in here, I'm going to browse. I'm going to click on the C drive here and click on my Enterprise folder. So here's the folder, and here's all my reports. And here's the acknowledgment report dated back in 2011, our standard report. I want to take this one and drop it into this folder. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that. And again, you'd have to do that on each report, I mean, uh, excuse me, on each workstation that was running Enterprise if it were locally. Now, if that were a shared folder on your network, maybe an S drive or an R drive, mm -hmm. you could just simply drop it in that one folder and everybody would get the True. report. Okay. okay. All right. Well, before we continue installing the stored procedure, I'm going to um, go into Enterprise again and show you what happens if you only do that part and forget to do the stored procedure. So we'll go into Estimating Order Entry, and we'll go back to our Job Planning screen and go to the Job Ticket, and I'm going to click on the Acknowledgement Report. And it's going to try to run my new custom report, but we're not going to have the stored procedure that goes along with it. So you'll get this message here that this table can't be found, and that means you forgot to run the mm -hmm. stored procedure. Okay. So that should be an indication to you that you installed something wrong and need to go back and put the stored procedure in. Sure. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So I'm going to cancel out our OK out of here and close these screens. And I'm going to minimize Enterprise. Now the stored procedure needs to be opened in SQL, SQL Server Management Studio. I have that open here on my desktop. So you would have to do this on the actual SQL Server. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to bring that file over to that SQL Server. So you might right. need your IT person to do it or mm -hmm. whoever manages your SQL Server. Right. Okay. Okay. So with SQL Server Management Studio open, you can go up to File, Open, and go to File again, and then just browse to that folder. 
and open the file. The other key thing that's very important to do is you want to make sure you're pointing to the right database because you may have several databases, as in this case I do, um, on my server. So you want to make sure when you open this file that you click in this window and then select the database that you want to run it against. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to run it against whatever database you have selected. You have selected, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that selected, I'm going to click on the Execute button. Now, you'll notice the first line in this says Drop Procedure, and it has the procedure name. So the first line it's going to try to do is get rid of what's there and then replace it with the new one. So I'm going to hit the Execute button, and I'm going to get a message. Can't drop the procedure because it doesn't exist. So it actually couldn't drop the procedure, but then it did create it. Mm -hmm. So you actually are okay to, and everything would work from here. But I usually like to run that a second time just to see that successful yeah. command. Sure. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit the execute button again, and now it tells me the command completed successfully. So I, now I know for sure it attached. Mm -hmm. So now let's go look and try to print that report again. So I'm going to go back into Enterprise, go back into Estimating Order Entry, go up to Job Planning, run my job ticket, and print my acknowledgement. And now I get my custom re report, and you can see it looks very different than the, mm -hmm. the standard. Right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any questions on how to do that? Uh, no. All that made sense. I guess the only thing, so I guess instead of getting both a report and a stored procedure, there could be times you might get just the report or just the stored procedure, so you'd only have to do one step or the other. Correct. Sometimes the, the changes that you want don't require a change in a stored procedure. It uses our standard, but you just, just want maybe a font change or a layout change in the report, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't get a stored procedure. Or vice versa, you already have a custom report, but we mm -hmm. needed to fix something or update something in the stored procedure, so you yep. might just get a stored procedure. Perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. I well, think that was good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.